Hello, and welcome to our podcast on the ideas of public versus private ownership of goods and services. So this is a fundamental idea that will permeate the entire year. So we wanted to make sure that you all understood that. Let's go ahead and see what we're talking about. So first off, let's go ahead and talk about what goods and services are. So I know we're looking at this in the government semester, but we will revisit this concept in a lot more depth when we get to the economic semester. So in short, goods are things that are produced. They could be tangible or intangible. Basically, things that could be touched or also items that might not be touched but are made and manufactured in some way. Goods could also be naturally occurring, such as coal, oil, water, etc. So some examples of goods are shoes, computers, tools. Those are things that are tangible. They can be touched. They can be maneuvered. They can be moved. But like we said, goods can also be intangible. So something like a digital download of movies or music or anything like that can't really be touched. You can't hold that in your hand, but it would be considered a good. Now a service is an action that someone does that benefits another person. So some examples might be firefighting or dentistry or teaching. These are services where one person does something for another person or a team does it for an individual or all the different combinations. So while these services do something for other people, they do have economic weight to them, that there is some sort of economic value to a service. Even though you can't see it and somebody is doing it for somebody else, that counts as a service. So let's go ahead and look at the next layer of this. What is the difference between something that is public versus something that is private? So let's talk about what public means. These are goods and services from our previous slides that are provided by some level of government. So that could be federal, state, or local. And again, we'll talk more about these as we move through the government semester. So these are goods and services that are used collectively by society. Since they are created by the government, the intention is that they are accessible by all people, by all citizens in the nation. And so the question becomes, how do we get these? Because the government really isn't in the business of making profit. That's not its purpose. Its purpose is to provide for the items listed in the preamble to the Constitution. And since these goods and services that are public don't create profit, they are paid for by the government collection of taxes. So when you purchase something at a store and it costs 99 cents and then $1.07 with tax added, that small amount of tax at the local level might go towards public schools. When your parents buy a house and pay massive amounts of dollars on property taxes, when they pay their federal income taxes every April, all of that tax collection goes to some level of government, and then the government uses that to supply some of these goods and services. And we'll talk more about it later, but basically the government steps in to operate some of these goods and services because they are not profitable, yet it seems like society needs them to be run by somebody. And since they don't generate profit, you're going to see a private company won't do it, and so the public sector or the governmental sector needs to come in and do it. So for example, highways, public schools, public parks, national defense. Many of these you'll see are services. These are services provided by some level of government. They do not generate profit, they only cost, yet society has said we need to have these things. So, since they can't pay for themselves, they are paid for by taxes, and they are considered public goods and services. So now contrast that with when we talk about private goods and services. These are goods and services provided by a non-governmental entity. So, some sort of individually owned business. Now, since these goods and services are private, they can be used by those who can pay for them. If a student or a family can't really afford education, they still get to go to public school. If a family doesn't have a ton of money, they still get to drive on I-25, a free highway. If a family doesn't have a ton of money, they still can go to a public park. 
So something that is private is paid for by the individuals who can afford them. And in turn, their existence is to generate profit. So for example, Target, Budget Rent-A-Car, the National Football League. Yes, they provide goods and sometimes services to the community. In essence, they are paid for by people who can afford them. They're not just bestowed or given to the community. If you want to purchase something at Target, you have to have money for it. And then in turn, Target's primary goal is to make profit. If they don't make profit, Target will die off. If a public park doesn't make profit, that's actually okay because the taxes collected will help keep that public park running. So one way to kind of think about this as you're going through in your mind and trying to separate this is consider who owns or controls that item or group or building that you're thinking about. If it seems like some level of government is in charge, then that item will be considered public. But if an individual person or a group of people, some sort of board of directors, and they are in charge, then you would look at that and say that thing, that item, that group is private. So another layer down, what rules do each of these have to follow? Something that is public, since it is funded by the government, it must be accessible to all people. It cannot discriminate against people because in essence, all of us are paying for this public park. Whether we use it or not, a little bit of our property tax is taken and used to supply this public park. Therefore, it must be accessible to all people. It is not acceptable for a public entity to discriminate, to limit, or to stop certain people from using that good or service. If it is public, it is public for everyone. The guiding document that ultimately guides that public institution is the Constitution and how that is interpreted by the Supreme Court. Again, all of those are elements of government. In contrast, something that is private still must follow the Constitution and how it is interpreted by the Supreme Court. So if we go back to our Target example, Target just can't make up their own rules and say, well, my name is Bob Smith, I'm the CEO of Target, and I don't want to allow anybody who's blonde to be in my store because that's what I, as the CEO, wants to do. You can't really do that because Target still operates within the United States and the umbrella of the nation is still under the control of the Constitution and the Supreme Court. But something that is private may also have additional guiding principles that could be very specific to a specific owner's desires, to a board of directors desires, to some sort of guidance provided by the people who own that business. For example, Chick-fil-A is a private organization and they choose to not be open on Sundays. And that is their choice. They are a private organization. They can choose to do whatever they would like in terms of building hours. That is quite different from a public park, which has to serve all people, regardless of race, creed, gender, etc. Therefore, the public park needs to be accessible to a wider variety of people, where a Chick-fil-A, a Target, a Home Depot could change some of its limits and some of its accessibilities if it chooses. And then lastly here, the principles of the free market have a large impact on these businesses. So the idea of profit generation. If a private business or entity isn't making money, it's not going to exist. Again, the National Football League, yes, is to organize 16 regular season games, a playoff and a Super Bowl every year. That is what they're doing. But if the NFL doesn't make money, it's done. Target is designed to sell all kinds of cool household gear, grocery items, and all kinds of things that Target has. But if Target doesn't make a profit, Target will not exist. So private entities rely more on the free market, whereas public ones may have some closer ties to government. So is there overlap between public and private, or are each of these operating in their own spheres? In short, there is overlap. Private entities cannot be entirely private and just make up 
their own rules. They are still within the umbrella of government. So for example, businesses must be compliant with the Americans with Disabilities Act. This was an act that basically says buildings must be accessible by anybody with a disability. Therefore, Target needs to have ramps to allow people in wheelchairs to come up to them. Another example, businesses must pay at least the federal minimum wage. Again, it's a lot cheaper for budget rent-a-car to pay next to nothing to their employees. But the federal government says, if you want to be in business, you must pay them a federal minimum wage. So again, there's the public entity of the minimum wage overlapping with the private entity of budget rent-a-car. Now, there are some intentional hybrids called public-private partnerships. These are intentional partnerships between the public sector and the private sectors, not just about government regulation. So for example, Target hires somebody that's private, but they have to pay them a minimum wage. That's a public element. So that's kind of regulation. These public-private partnerships are intentional pairings of both the public sector and the private sector. They tend to be in transportation projects. So for example, Highway 36 that connects Boulder to Denver. This was a public-private partnership when a few years ago they expanded Highway 36, they added lanes to it, they created more safety features, they basically tried to grow Highway 36 in order to handle the increase in traffic between Boulder and Denver. This was going to be a public service having a road, but some level of government partnered with private construction groups and said, hey, if you guys can build this for us, you can also charge money for that third lane and make it a toll lane. Therefore, the private group that is building this highway spends a lot of money, but then they're also able to make profit, and that's what a private institution needs. At the same time, Highway 36 is public. You can drive on it for free. You might just have to go a little bit slower if the regular lanes get backed up. But again, the point is there are sometimes these intentional public-private partnerships in our society. And so the debate that we end up having here in government class is what things in society should be public and which should be private. For example, schools. The school you are in right now is a public school. It is paid for by taxes. And this high school works at X or Y level of goodness. It's a pretty good school. Could it be better? Sure. But it is publicly funded. So it is accessible to all people in the community. You don't have to pay to walk in the door. Now, down the road, there might be a private school where in order to walk in the door, you do owe them tuition. $2,000 a year, $15,000 a year, $25,000 a year. That would be a private school. Now, if it's a private school, do they have to be accessible to everyone? Nope. They could choose to say only these people are allowed to show up here or we will or won't offer these services because we can choose to do that. We are a private school. And so the debate becomes which things in society are better if run by the public good of the government and which things might be better run if they are controlled by a private group. And it doesn't just have to be a, man, all schools must be public, end of story, or all schools must be private, end of story. That last bullet talks about this is a continuum. Since there's always going to be public-private overlap, how much overlap should there be? Tying into the political parties that we see in existence today, Republicans tend to want smaller public influence in the economy. They prefer to privatize more things. So for example, they would prefer to have more private schooling options, more choices, rather than just one public school option. They would prefer to have private health care as an option for people, whether that's Aetna, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. They would prefer to have people choose their own health care through a private organization. On the flip side of that continuum, the Democrats tend to want larger public influence in the economy. They would prefer to see government controlling more things. Democrats tend to support 
public schooling and not want money to go to private schools. They tend to value something like Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act, where the government is involved in the health care system versus everyone fending for themselves. And if you don't have money, you don't get health care kind of thing. So this is the debate on all of these goods and services. And whether it's obvious or not, there's probably some question about where should the continuum go? How much is too much government? How much is not enough? How much is enough private? How much is not? So let's go ahead and practice. Here we have a list of a couple items down the left hand side and then some columns over to your right. You can do this mentally or within your notes, but take a minute and ask yourself, what is each of the items on the left? First off, is it a good or a service? Then ask yourself, is the item more public or more private? Go ahead and stop the podcast, take a minute and challenge yourself. And here are the answers as best as we see them. We're not going to explain each one right here, but if you have questions about why the Coast Guard is a public entity, whereas United Airlines is private, please go ahead and bring those into class and we'll be able to answer those up as best we can. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. So please keep in mind the idea of public entities, items, goods and services versus private entities or goods and services. And there's often a lot of overlap between the two. As always, if you have any questions, please bring those into class and we'll get those answered for you as quickly as possible. Thanks so much.